Frozen, the musical, is headed to Perth. It will be starting in August at Crown Theatre. We've been promising kids all week yes. that we're going to be speaking to Elsa. Uh, the lady behind Elsa is Gemma Rick. She joins us now. Hi, Gem. Hi. Oh, Hi, Gemma. Gosh. I mean, what a, I saw the show in Adelaide on Saturday night, opening night. Amazing. Oh, you did? I was there. And oh, brilliant. I, and I, I must preface this by saying I'd never seen the movie. I didn't actually didn't know the full story. I knew there's a couple of princesses and oh, stuff, and then one of them and turned stuff. everything go, uh, uh, cold. But I didn't really know what happened. Unbelievable! It was such a great show. You guys must be so proud of it. Oh, thank you so much. We really are. Um, did you get a surprise with Hans then? If you didn't know the film. Yes, Prince yes, Hans. yes, bit of a yes. twist. Yes, yeah, that's yep. right. But even even the, the way the, the staging is incredible and there are, there was a, there's a scene in the second half where a whole bunch of people are frozen together mm, and yeah. I'm like, how? Do, like it happens in front of your eyes yep. and yet it still <laughs> seems impossible what they did. It's extraordinary. So that was on the lake scene, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. when, yeah, when, uh, when Anna gets frozen, yeah. and I yes. actually was super interested to see how they were going to do that because they're making something that's, you know, an animation into real life. So I was like, how are they going to do this scene? And so they've done it so well. It's so clever. Yeah, yeah, with the projections, um, it's, yeah, it's it's really, you're kind of baffled by a lot of the things that happen because you just don't know how how it all works. It's magical. I tell you, um, when Frozen was like a huge hit, I went, I've got to go home and watch this. And as a single adult man going home to watch Frozen, (laughs) I was wrapped with Frozen. (laughs) I was so, because all in Canto and all those other ones that come out, right? And and that none of the, none of it has grabbed me as Frozen has. I'm yet to watch Frozen two the sequel. Yeah, no, it's good. As which well. is good news yeah. for you, Gem, too, because that's maybe yeah. another stage show that could be on its <laughs> way. Um, More employment for me, exactly. Yeah. That's right. But Gem, the one thing I really do love about Frozen is the amount of dads, especially who have been dressing up as Elsa or Anna um, for their daughters. Um, you can Google it and see it on the internet. It's amazing. Are you perhaps thinking that there's going to be a lot of people in um, coming in? Costume, like maybe fathers being forced to dress as Elsa in the crowd. <laughs> yes, but like, is it forced though? Like, I don't yes. know. <laughs> I think it's really quite special um, the bonding experience that's yes. happening with in that sense. And I have to agree as well. Like, as an adult, it is actually a beautiful concept and a beautiful show, and yeah. the music so wonderful that it isn't just for kids in that sense. Like, you really do get a lot out of it as an adult, and like. You know, singing the lyrics of Let It Go, for example, they're like, they're adult forms of things that I use all the time, like letting go of fear, letting go of trying to be perfect. And, you know, they're very adult. So I think that, you know, the adults are getting just as much out of this as the kids. Well, about you singing, why don't we have a little uh, listen to you singing Let It Go? Because you know what? To be cast as Elsa, that means you have to have a killer voice to be able to go near the original here. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore Let it go, let it go Turn away and slam the door I don't care what they're going to say Let the storm rage on The cold never bothered me anyway <laughs> So that yeah. song is an absolute showstopper during the performance. You know, closes out the first half, and you know there's a you know some sort of fairly dramatic staging stuff that happens at the same time. It is an absolute crowd. The crowd went nuts for it, Jim. Yeah, sometimes they're so loud when a certain moment happens yes. in Let Go, um, and I can hardly hear the music or myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, it seems so effortless and pure coming mm. from you. So. Is it that, I mean, for you, is it yeah, easy to yeah, sing or yeah. what do you go through to be able to make sure that you hit those notes? Oh, because that it, high note in Let It Go, yeah. like that, yeah, does but, that frighten you or can you do it? <laughs> well, no, no, I can do it, but I've had to work on it for a really long time. It's actually a really good question, that question, because basically um, I'll get technical for a second, yeah. but as I actually try to feel less resistance when I'm singing. So yep. uh, that's my practice. So as soon as I feel resistance, then I know that I'm not doing correct technique. So that's why when you're saying it sounds effortless, yes. it's because I'm trying to not have resistance. Yeah, that, well, that's that perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we try to do our show with no resistance. <laughs> <laughs> but Jim, do you have... 
do you actually have a vocal coach? I mean, you've been at this game for a long time. You've done many musicals. Yeah. You're a great singer. You're and an not, unbelievable and, and singer. And not like a coach to tell her what to do, a coach like to look after her voice and all well, that the whole, Yeah, the whole lot. Yeah, you definitely have um, singing. Like most most people will have singing lessons leading up to a show to really? work on certain spots of um, the the role where it might be tricky in your voice and you've got to figure out. And you, the best thing is is to nut all that stuff out before you start because once you start, we are go, go, go. And so I really have to know the songs inside and out, know that I'm capable so then I can deliver through fatigue, through pressure. Yeah. Um, so you have to be super pre- prepared before you even start. Yeah. Right. Jim, there's a costume party coming up. Are you allowed to <laughs> borrow the Elsa outfit to go to a costume party? What are the rules? Uh, I I would love to, but I do not think I would be able to. That costume <laughs> is like almost like um you know put into a locker. Form. Oh really? Like, oh right. Well, like, so protected, you know, and you know even to the point where my dresser has to hold the back of it so it doesn't touch the ground. Oh. Um, oh. Stage. Yeah, yeah, we look after our things in Disney, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. How, and how many do you get? Do you just get one and you can't dirty it or is, it, is there a backup? No, no, I just have one because oh. it takes like three months to make that one dress. Wow. <laughs> so it's, yeah, yeah, and there's like 14,000 crystals put on. Oh. and oh. Yeah, it weighs an absolute ton, like you wouldn't think it, but it is so heavy because of all the crystals and beads. So, yeah, we only get one. <laughs> and you're wearing it every night. For how many How many shows are you doing across Australia? We do uh, eight shows a week and so, um, and yeah, and we're, we've are we been going for a couple of years now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's that hard, isn't it? Hey, Jem, obviously COVID ripped the guts out of the arts sector, you know, when a lot of the, you know, your shows couldn't go on, even though the show must go on, they say. What what did you do? I mean, I guess you had some enforced downtime. Yeah, look, it was actually quite a crazy time because we had been cast and it had been announced and then COVID hit. So then it was like, are we even going to be able to do yeah. the show? And, um, and you know, they could have made that call because the writing was on the wall that we weren't going to be back in the theatre for a long time. Um, but we were so fortunate that Disney stayed strong. They really wanted to put the show on for people because, you know, this is the thing that we all actually need art in our lives. That is the thing that we go to for uh, to not think about what's going on in our, you know, work days and difficulties and you get escapism from it. So it is important in the balance of life and I think Disney Disney knew that and that's why they really wanted to bring the show to everyone. Um, so, yeah, so when we got to get back on that stage, oh, my gosh, it was, it was, I'd cried on a regular basis. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Gratitude. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, Perth is gagging for Frozen yes. to get here and I've got a really fantastic opportunity, a photo op for when you get here as well. I mean, we don't have Arendelle here, but we've got Arendelle Road, yes. which <laughs> leads you out to Belcata and mm. I just thought Anna um, yep. and Elsa Arendelle Road. It just makes sense. Yeah, that, yeah. That, makes sense. Wait yeah. till you see your kingdom. You can really, <laughs> <laughs> There's a big Bunnings that. there. <laughs> a very big Bunnings. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.